It's Maritza from No Fluff Zone here, and today I wanted to share with you the dissecting the question strategy part of the Spade mini series. So when you dissect the questions, what you're doing in essence is you're identifying keywords and underlining them in this in this question. What I do is I'll have the question written on the board in uh, black black ink, right? So in black marker. So in red pen, I will dissect the keywords. So I'll circle the keywords. And I'll ask the kids for synonyms for the keywords, uh, for the keywords in the questions. So that helps them understand different ways to ask the same thing. So this is my biggest problem when you're teaching, for example, the main idea or for example, when you do author's purpose or author's point of view, and they'll ask, they'll throw in a word like speaker and the kids know how to answer the point of view question, but they don't understand how to make the connection between speaker and author, right? So those are the things that this, doing the dissecting with the children, the questions, has helped them build those connections and into, it helps them build independence when answering questions, right? So the first thing I do is I read the question with the students. I always, and this is my thing, I suggest you have the question printed and available. Um, I understand when we were kids, we had to copy the questions from the board, and maybe you have more flexible and more time to do that. But I'm in a situation where I have 35 minutes to do a whole group lesson. And pretty much after the thir those 35 minutes, I need to know whether or not the children got the skill or not. And the ones that didn't, those are the ones that I have to reinforce the next day, right? Or during small group instruction. So I usually do is I have this little paper, right? And it has the question there. So where it says dissect question, I write, for example, this one is part A, a two-part question. What did Cesar Chavez's parents teach him after he was born? And then part B, which statement from the text best supports your answer? So there they have to use text evidence to support their answer, right? So when we do this, um, when you have the question available for the students, it's you're teaching the reading skill, right? You're not teaching them to copy quick, which is also a skill that will help them be successful. But at the same time, at this point, it's time consuming. Um, you'll have students that are done in one minute, and then you'll have students that in 10 minutes they're still copying the question so you as a teacher have to decide will the one kid that for a minute you know is is going to wait what eight nine minutes should i have that kid sit there and suffer and wait patiently while the other kid is copying the question you know i always find it um crucial to get the most bang from your whole group instruction so that's what i've done i will have these papers done typed copied, and they just glue it in their journal. So here's the other thing about this too. Um, I suggest you have at least two questions for each skill. So we have, for example, we usually read three stories per two-week skill, minimum three. So I have, I try to have the same question for the first story and the second story, right? Um, I'll throw in different words to help them obtain the skill or different ways to ask the same skill. So this one we're talking about sequence, right? In this question. Make sure the questions ask the skill differently. I look at the reading assessment to help create questions um, they will be asked to answer. Since they have been provided for them, you will have ample time to do at least two questions. I typically do three. So I'm at a point where I do the first one with them, they do the second one with their partner, and the third one they do it by themselves, and you see the, the thinking process. Um, we look for keywords in the questions, step two. I have the students underline and write synonyms for those words, one or two, above the word. So in red pen, for example, Caesar, we would circle Caesar, main character. What? A detail or an event or, 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 or something, right? Uh, here, teach. Synonyms for teach, learn, uh, taught, or, or, or show him, right? After. So here's where you're going into the skill, the, the sequence skill. After. 
So not before he was born, after. So there are many things his parents taught him after he was born. So, for example, in sequence, you would do order, beginning to end, events. To recount, to count again, to tell again, to tell in sequential order. The sixth time in practice, it should be done as a class. Sometimes the students have better words than I can think of. Um, this helps me teach them using words they understand, and then the scaffolds their understanding to more complex words. When you do this religiously, the students take over the dissecting. They love participating and stating the, the words that are synonyms. I also uh, notice that sometimes they call out words that are not the synonyms of the keywords in the, sent in the questions. And I use it as an opportunity to clarify misconceptions of the concepts. So it'll be situations where I'll say, okay, what's a synonym to after? And they'll say, oh, uh, before he was born or when he was a baby or, you know, little things like that. So I always try to push them to the right answer, right? That's what we do as teachers. Um, I also noticed that I think I was teaching once main idea and they kept confusing main idea with main topic so you know when I'm it wasn't like per se my little kid but one of my middle kids let's say uh she said oh yeah the topic so that presented itself in a situation where I had to immediately clarify because if I just say yeah 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 sure 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 then the kids that do understand what she's saying immediately I've destroyed their knowledge of main topic versus main idea so I had to do a quick you know like a two-minute explain explanation of the difference and these are the things that we won't know unless we ask the children for feedback for constant feedback and they have to have the trust in you because what I've noticed too is some situations the teacher will be the holder of all knowledge and children will not be inclined to participate or, or fear participating so after you dissect the question, look at the type of question you're answering. Is it explicit or implicit? So I made these and I have them on my, my teacher pay teacher store and they have been very, very helpful. And the good thing about this poster is that it's a standalone story. So it's like a little standalone um, opportunity that you can reuse throughout different texts, right? So I write what an explicit question is. When answering an explicit question, the answer should be directly in the text. Look for keywords and box them in the text. So this is my example of the text. When I bit into my apple, a little worm came wiggling out. Question. According to the text, what happened after the author bit into the apple? Answer. A little worm came wiggling out. So this helps them understand when I say explicit, I mean go back in the text and find it, right? Because we love saying go back in the text and find the answer. And sometimes it's not in the text. Sometimes it's an implicit question, right? When answering an implicit question, the answer is not directly in the text, but implied. Think about the hidden meaning in the text. When Katie got home, she ran to greet her mother with flowers she just picked. Question, how do you think Katie feels about her mother? Answer, if she ran home, she was eager to see her mother. You are usually eager to see people you love. She picked flowers for her mother. When you give a gift to someone, it's because you care about them. So these are all the things that I use, right? So I also use this little poster here during teacher lot. Um, dissect the questions, identify and underline keywords. What is the question asking you to do? What type of question is it? So this itself helped me differentiate between implicit and explicit because sometimes I would get confused. And in the teaching and then just getting it done, I had nothing to refer to. So sometimes these posters are more for us to remember and keep on track of what we're teaching. So the text evidence you annotated is, you know, the answer to the question. So in the next video, I want to explain how text evidence can be a tricky thing to teach to students that, you know, have never cited text evidence. They're quick to go back or remember where the answer is, but when you ask them to justify, this is where, you know, things get lost in translation. So that's it. Um, put in the comments below if 
you have anything to add, any cool strategies that you do while you're dissecting the text. Like my strategy is I already have the little paper out. I use red pen. I have these posters available. I refer to the posters, right? Or maybe if you're a student, any confusion you have or a parent, anything that you do or you would like to know more about when it comes to dissecting questions, right? It's easy for the teachers to just send homework and say, oh, dissect the question today. And you're sitting there as a parent like, what does that mean? How do you dissect the question? And that's it. Please subscribe. Hit, a no hit the notification bell if you want to stay up to date with all the cool videos I post. And share and like. Thanks and have a great day. Bye.